tipping. The call for a gratuity, the expectation of one, the guilt if you don't leave one feels like a growing part of our daily life, and the numbers support this. According to the payroll processing firm Gusto, 6.5% of American retailers currently accept tips, which is nearly twice the amount recorded in 2019. While tipping has always been commonplace in sit-down restaurants, it's not unusual now to see it at fast casual spots, coffee shops, sporting events, the barber, online. Pew Research surveys shows that the constant bombardment of requests has led many Americans to experience tip fatigue, which can lead to actually reduced gratuities. Tipping has now made its way into the political campaign, not a request for donations, but both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump say there should be no taxes on tips. Michael Lynn joins us now. He's the Michael D. Johnson and Family Professor of Services Marketing at Cornell School of Hotel Administration. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's start with these, um, these campaign proposals to eliminate uh, taxes on tips. How would those actually affect workers? Well, the obvious is that they'll have less taxable income, right? So they'll take home more. But the IRS estimates that roughly half of all tax, uh, all tip income is undeclared anyway. Um, we think there are about 40 billion, 45 billion a year tipped in the United States. Half of that's being declared. So let's say 21 billion, um, 21 uh, billion of income is now tax-free. Um, and that's the benefit to the employee. And how would it affect, do you think, businesses if they, if taxes are no longer going to be, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, if tips are no longer going to be taxed? I think that depends upon the details, and we haven't heard very much about the details. For example, is it just the in personal income tax that's going to be exempted, or are we also going to exempt the employee from the FICA taxes on that tip? income. And if the employees are exempted from FICA taxes, what about the employers, their share? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be exempted? If so, then it'll benefit the employers too. Um, so but in, in it's, you start to, to have to speculate, right? So if, if this were to pass, presumably more and more employees are going to ask and pressure their employers to add a tip screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it'll be harder and harder for those employers to resist. And, and because consumer backlash, that could hurt them. Politicians rush in where there is a new part of American life. And that seems to me the, the, that this rise in tipping that we all feel is now proved by the fact that politicians want to take advantage of it. Why is tipping now so prevalent in so many of the different places that we go? Well, technology is part of it. It's easier to ask than it's ever been. Uh, COVID conditioned us to start tipping in places that we hadn't previously done. And uh, a really tight labor market has given employees enough power to demand uh, that their employers ask for tips. Explain the COVID part of, of that answer. What happened in COVID that made uh, the changed both the expectation of tips and also our willingness to give them? Well, A, during COVID, many people had nowhere else to spend their money, so they had plenty of cash. They were at home safe. Service workers were not, and they felt, and they knew that those service workers weren't getting, for example, restaurant uh, waiters weren't getting in-dining uh, customers. And so there was a clear, they had a, a greater need for tips. And I think consumers responded to that perceived greater need and also wanted to reciprocate kind of as a hazard pay uh, for employees working during that time. And as a consequence, they started tipping more for traditionally tipped services and became more and more likely to tip for services that we wouldn't otherwise. Uh, tipping for quick service increased during COVID. Mm -hmm. 